हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम वंस अगेन इन आर वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज फॉर क्लास ट्वेल्थ वी आर इन दर्ड लेक्चर ऑफ द चैप्टर कंज्यूमर बिहेवियर टूडे वी विल डू द डिमांड ऑफ द कंज्यूमर इन ऑर्डिनरी सेंस डिमांड मीन्स द क्वांटिटी और यूनिट्स ऑफ ए कॉमोडिटी विच आर कस्टमर परचेजेज ए कॉमन मैन ट्रीट्स हिज डिजायर एज अ डिमांड बट इन इकोनॉमिक्स Desire is only one element of demand. In economics, demand means a specific quantity of a good or service which an individual consumer or household is willing to purchase at a specific price and at a specific time. Let's see an example. A consumer may desire to have a motor car. A beggar may desire to have food. I may desire to own a helicopter. but all these desires will not be fulfilled unless there is required purchasing power and willingness to sacrifice this purchasing power it means the demand has following four elements we should have willingness to purchase we should have ability to purchase the price should be given and it should be at a specific time it means demand is not only the willingness to purchase rather it means something more it also means our ability to purchase and this ability can be determined only when the price is given at a particular point of time factors affecting demand demand for a commodity depends upon a number of factors factor means there are many elements which affect the demand some factors which directly or indirectly increase or decrease the demand are being discussed here first is price of the same commodity this factor states that price and quantity demanded of the consumer are negatively related means if the price of the commodity rises in the market the quantity demanded of the consumer will fall and if the price of the commodity will fall its quantity demanded will rise it shows that price of the commodity affects the quantity demanded second factor is income of the consumer income and demand are positively related it means as the income of the consumer increases his demand for goods also increases because if your money income increases it improves your purchasing power due to which you demand more third factor is advertisement and demonstration it plays a major role in affecting the demand for a good more the advertisement of a good through television radio pamphlets banners etc more will be the demand in the same way more will be the demonstration effect more will be the demand and vice versa fourth factor affecting demand is price of related goods what are related goods relation may be of complements or it may be of substitutes let's discuss both of them one by one first the complements complements are those goods which are consumed together goods which cannot be used in isolation without the consumption of other good are called as complements example pen and ink without ink pen cannot be used like car and petrol without petrol car cannot be used now imagine what will be the impact on demand of pen if the price of ink rises or what will be the effect on demand of car if the price of petrol rises we can definitely say that the demand of both the goods that is pen and car will decline it means if price of one good changes as in our example the price of ink and petrol changes the demand of other good is affected as in our example the demand of pen and car is affected it shows that if the price of one good and the demand of the other good are indirectly related it means the relation between them is of complements second case is of substitutes substitutes are also known as alternative goods these goods are those which can be easily replaced which can be used at one another's place example tea and coffee ball pen and gel pen now the question is 
whether the price of substitutes affect the demand. Let us take an example. Between tea and coffee, tea is cheaper and we demand 4 cups of tea daily. But if the rate of coffee, coffee falls, then what will happen? Surely, our demand for tea will also fall and our demand will shift to coffee. Means it shows that the price of coffee and demand of tea are directly related. As the price of coffee falls, the demand of tea also falls. The next factor affecting demand is our tastes and preferences. Not only this, population also affects demand. The size of population, composition of population, distribution of income among population, all these factors individually as well as jointly affects the demand. Like if your family size is small, you will demand in small quantity. If your family size is large, you will demand in large quantity. Composition of population means mixture of population. If there are more female in the family, the demand will be of the articles needed by the girls like cosmetics. If there are more kids in the population, the demand will be for stationary items, chocolates, toys. If there are more seniors, then the demand will be for sticks, artificial teeth, medicines, etc. Distribution of income refers to rural area or urban area as the demand is affected by the area as well. You see like there are so many other factors which may increase or decrease the demand of a consumer like weather conditions as raincoats, umbrellas are demanded more in rainy season, tea, pakoras are demanded more in winter season, ice creams, cold drinks are demanded more in summer season. Marital status also affects demand. Fashion trend in the market also affects demand. Schemes provided by the sellers like buy one get one free also affects demand. So there are lots of factors which affects demand. Now law of demand. Law of demand states that price of a commodity and its quantity demanded are indirectly related to each other but keeping other factors constant. Just elaborating the law. There are two key elements in this law. Firstly, inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded and secondly, other things being constant. Inverse relationship between the two means if the price increases, then the quantity demanded will fall and if the price falls, then the quantity demanded rises and it is a human tendency that we demand more when the price is less. Second part, other things being constant is known as ceteris paribus, C-E-T-E-R-I-S, ceteris, P-A-R-I-B-U-S, paribus in Latin language. It means, if price rises, the consumer will demand less, but only if at the same time other factors like income of the consumer, size of the population, tastes and preferences etc are kept same. Let's prove it. If the price rises in the market, the law says that your demand should fall. But if at the same time your income doubles, then will you decrease your quantity demanded in spite of increase in price of the commodity? The answer is no. Means this law is true only if there is a change in price of the commodity and other factors are kept constant. Let's take an another example to explain this law more clearly. Draw a table having two columns, one for price and other for the quantity demanded. In price column, you see prices are rising from 1, 2, 3 and 4 and quantity demanded is decreasing due to it. 50, 35, 20 and 10. Analyze the table. It shows as the price per unit is increasing as 1, 2, 3, 4, the quantity demanded of the consumer is falling as 50, 35, 20, 10. Remember, the law of demand is a qualitative statement and not the quantitative one. Means, 
it does not tell the quantitative relationship between price and quantity. Now draw a curve on the basis of this table. On x axis we will take quantity and on y axis we will take the price. What is the shape of the curve? What are the properties of the curve? You will find that the demand curve is downward sloping due to the inverse relationship between the two axes. As it is increasing, it is decreasing. Or if it is increasing, the quantity demanded is decreasing. When two axes have inverse relation, therefore their demand curve will be negative sloping. It slopes from left hand side to right hand side. It is convex to the origin. Students, till now we were considering the individual consumer's demand curve. Let us take an example to discuss the concept of market demand curve. Draw again a table. In first column take the price. In second column we will take the demand of various consumers in the market and in the third column take aggregate demand of the market. In price column prices are 1, 2, 3 and 4. In demand of various consumers we have taken the demand of 3 consumers in the market Mr. P, Mr. Q and Mr. R. The demand of Mr. P is 50, 40, 20, 10. Prices are 1, 2, 3, 4 and the demand is 50, 40, 20, 10. The demand of Mr. Q is 60, 50, 30 and 20. Demand of Mr. R is 70, 60, 50 and 20. And in the last column aggregate market demand, what we will do is at price 1, the quantity demanded of P is 50, of Q is 60 and of R is 70. We will add 50 plus 60 plus 70. So, what is the aggregate market demand at price 1 is 180. In the same way, we can calculate the aggregate market demand at price 2, 3 and 4. Now, draw a demand curve taking price on y axis 1, 2, 3, 4 and the aggregate demand on the x axis. Students, you will be amazed to see because market demand curve is also downward sloping. It is also from left hand side to right hand side. It is also convex to the origin. I mean to say that either demand curve is drawn for an individual or for market, its basic properties does not change. Now the question arises why the law of demand prevails in the market or what is the logic behind the law of demand? Whether law of demand is universally true? Students there are too many questions which come in our mind related to the law of demand. But all questions cannot be answered today. We have to wait for it till our next and last part of this chapter. We are closing today our discussion here. Let us revise what we have done today. We started with the concept of demand with its various factors affecting law of demand, demand curve and market demand curve. Wait for our next lecture. Thank you.